Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Jade Soft Tech. I'm Vikram B. Maduri here. And in this session, uh, we are going to discuss about what is Odata and how does it work. This is a basic introduction, a quick introduction about Odata and the concept behind it. So Odata stands for Open Data Protocol. Now, what is Odata? Odata is a protocol, the open data protocol that SAP is using to make SAP data accessible to world so that even developers who don't understand SAP lingo can be able to use this data and develop web applications, websites and mobile applications. So with this, what we understand is people who want to get the data from SAP into non-SAP softwares or non-SAP applications, uh, they can do that through this OData services. Now, how internet works. So this uh, may seem a bit uh, not uh, irrelevant to the OData services, but we need to know how internet works because the major common link between the OData services and the, and the concept of how the internet works is the HTTP. Now, HTTP is the common thread between the two. HTTP is the underlying protocol to which OData is based and also one of the most common language which is spoken on the internet. So, how internet works? Like when you click something on your screen, it directly, like you open HTTP, and this HTTP request goes to the web server. And from the web server, again, uh, it will be like accessed by other, other people. So let's say you have created some, uh, some page on the HTTP and you launch it in the web server. That can be accessed by others using the www website. So this is a browser where you are actually developing it and uh, the, the end users are accessing it. Now you would typically need a web browser address of the document you want to you want to read or a URL. That's a uni uniform resource locator. URL stands for uniform resource locator. A web server running at the system where the document is located. Now web browser is a software which is responsible to retrieving and representing resources on the web. So web browsers passes the HTML response received from the web and prepares a DOM tree. Now DOM stands for document object model and it is a language independent convention of representing objects in HTML. So web browser acts as an interface between you and the World Wide Web. Now you can request for a document located somewhere on this planet by providing its address via the browser which, which sends HTTP requests to the web, web server. The web server then sends back HTTP response that is passed by the web browser for you to view the document on your machine. Now HTTPS stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. I repeat, Hypertext transfer protocol and as the name suggests it defines the semantics of what the browser and the web web server can communicate to each other the how part of the communication or the byte to byte uh, transfer of the data packets across the network is not http but it is done via the tcp ip protocols now an important component in the story so far is also the web server in a nutshell web server is a server program which sits on the physical server and waits for a request from a client whenever a request is received the web server prepares a response and sends it back to the client using http protocol it is important to note that http is not the only by but by far most commonly used protocol and that the client here can be browser or any other software that communicates in http so let us now try and put up a formal definition of HTTP. HTTP is based on client server architecture and it is used, used to uh, send the request 
response protocol to communicate between the client and the web server. The HTTP protocol helps define what requests can be sent across the client and response sent by web server. The communication of data over the network is however done using the TCP IP protocol. So it is evident that HTTP is based on client server architecture and uh, every single HTTP request that is used by the web server is forgotten after a response has been sent across. So web servers do not process an HTTP request by remembering the previous request. So URI or the uniform resource identifier can be classified as name, locator or both that identifies a resource uniquely. So URL uniform resource locator is actually a subset of URI that not only identifies a resource uniquely but also provides means of locating the resource. Now, if I, now let's understand the difference between URL and URI here. So URL the one from HTTP slash slash into this one is URL. But URI will have the location as well. So complete till here it's called URI. Till here it's URL. Till dot HTML it's URL. And till the post is URI. Now defining the request and response. HTTP requests are sent with one of the defined request methods that indicates the action to be taken on the resource. So following are the two most commonly used methods. So get and post. Get is this is used to retrieve information of the resource from the server. Post this method is used to send data to the server. For example, if you enter a text string on Google search page and press enter, it will generate an HTTP request with get method in the background. So on the other hand, if you provide your username and password on the login page and present press enter, a post HTTP request will be sent on the server. So HTTP response from the web server comes with the data and the status code. So the status code provides a context to the response. So for instance, if you if you do not correctly provide the resource location, the web browser will send you a response which you are not expecting. Along with the data response comes the status code. So known universally in the HTTP world that explains to the user what could be the reason for an unexpected responses. So for HTTP codes are three digit integers. So for example, if any, any HTTP code uh, will be generated like uh, 100, 101, 102, 103, something like that. These are informational codes. Uh, it means the request has been received and the process is continuing. If it's a 2xx means 200, 200, 201, 202, 203, anything, it will be a success message. It means the action was re successfully received, understood and accepted. 3xx redirection. It means further action must be taken in order to complete the request. 4x client error. It means the request contains incorrect syntax or cannot be fulfilled. 5xx server error. It means the server failed to fulfill an apparently valid request. For example, status code 400 means bad request. It means that the server did not understand the request. Auditor allows creation and consumption of RESTful APIs. And uh, the next session we'll be discussing about that. In the next session, I'll be clearly explaining about the Odita services. Now, if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to our channel youtube.com slash softtech. And if at all, if you are looking out for any kind of trainings, you can contact us at training at rageyatesofty.com. And if at all, if you are looking out for jobs, do contact us at jobs at rageyatesofty.com. Thank you. Have a great day.